This tower in rural Germany marks the scene of a discovery that would shake the foundations of science. 16 bones that would rewrite history. Neanderthal number one started a whole new field of science. It's the exact spot of Kleiner Feldhofer Grotte, better known as the final resting place of Neanderthal one. We start to question where we came from and what our purpose on this world is. Why are we here? In the summer of 1856, this peaceful slice of nature in the Neander Valley would have been drowned in the harsh sounds of quarrying, when a few workers stumbled upon some strange bones. Thick, heavy, and unlike anything they'd ever seen. Their first thought was that it was a cave bear, and that could have been the end of it. But they were no scientists, and technically, neither was local school teacher Johann Karl Fullroth. But when the bones reached him, he immediately recognized them as something special. He believed they belonged to an ancient prehistoric human. But this was no simple claim to make in the 19th century. It was a radical idea, heresy. Most scientists still believed humans were a fixed species, unchanged since creation. Still three years before Darwin's Origin of Species was published, human evolution as a concept was still taboo, and opposition ranged from ridicule to outright hostility. Many dismissed the Neanderthal fossil away as some pathological human deformity, a sign of disease or even idiocy. Others claimed they most likely belonged to a horse-riding Russian Cossack with rickets. The iconic brow ridge? That was suggested to be caused by a lifetime of heavy frowning. But slowly the idea began to take hold. Eight years later, Anglo-Irish geologist William King proposed something even bolder. These bones weren't just ancient Homo sapiens, they belonged to a different species. And it was he who would give it its own name, albeit rather unceremoniously, buried in a footnote at the bottom of his paper. A quiet aside that would echo through scientific history. Homo neanderthalensis. And as a footnote to that footnote, Neander, for reasons totally unrelated to the valley's most famous resident, literally means new man. But debate continued to rage for decades. Fulrot would not live to see his observation accepted. Only as Neanderthals were found elsewhere, including two earlier Neanderthal discoveries from Belgium and Gibraltar that had been previously overlooked, making Neanderthal 1 technically Neanderthal 3, did the mounting evidence become impossible to ignore. There couldn't be that many rickety Cossack horse riders all over Europe. This was an entirely separate hominid group. As for Neanderthal 1's cave back in Germany, it vanished. Limestone quarrying totally destroyed the site. This piece of limestone here is almost the only thing left of a huge gorge that once stood some 30 meters high. For more than 100 years, the cave's location was lost. Only in the late 1990s did scientists make a concerted effort to rediscover it. But that was no easy quest. Nowadays, the valley looks completely different to 1856. There was an idea that the finding site has to be somewhere here in the valley, but they don't know exactly where. But eventually, among the rubble, they found tools, at least one new Neanderthal, and crucially, three bone fragments that stunningly confirmed they'd refound Neanderthal one himself. Three fragments from this time fits perfectly on the 16 bones on 1856. So they knew they were on the right place. And it was like you can conquer the world. So you found these small fragments in a yard of dirt, the first and best evidence that you are on the, on the spot for the first Neanderthal that ever found. This tower now stands in its place, at the height of where the cave once stood. You can see here the Neanderthal lying in this position like he once did 40,000 years ago. As for Neanderthal one himself, the bones give us a glimpse of his life all those years ago. So Neanderthal number one was male, 40 to 45 years old, then he died. 
Uh, he had an injury on his left arm when he was 18 to 20 years. It was an accident or a hunting accident and the upper and lower arm was so injured that he can't move it like its right arm for the majority of his life. Besides these injuries, the postcranium in the skull was intact and after a very adventurous life in the Stone Age, he was buried intentionally here in the cave, but how he died was unknown. Our relationship and understanding about Neanderthals is constantly evolving. Even the idea that he was buried in some sort of ceremony hints at a far more sophisticated Neanderthal society than was stereotypically depicted. We know that they care for each other. It's a completely different picture than back in 1856. Far from stupid or brutish, we now know they had complex relationships, abstract thinking, and far more technological advances than originally thought. We also know they interbred with humans to such an extent that 2-3% of non-African human DNA has Neanderthal origins. Since 1856, we've been joined by numerous other distant ancestors in our ever-growing family tree. But this spot, right here, and Neanderthal 1, will always be the spark that changed our entire understanding of our place in the world. And of us.